Here is another question that I took from College Board um, preparation questions or review questions before the exam and or the quizzes that I have them posted for you online through College Board. Um, so some of the questions that look really, really long, they're not necessarily very difficult. So let's look at this question. Two identical um, spring scales are each attached to a cord that is wrapped around a pulley as shown in figure one. And I think this is the top figure, like this one. This part. The two pulleys have identical mass MP and the radius RP. However, pulley A is a solid disc, whereas pulley B has a most that has most of its mass located at its outer rim. Both pulleys can rotate about their centers with neglectable, ne negligible uh, friction in their axis. The pulleys are initially at rest when the two springs scales are pulled with the same constant force Fs, causing both pulleys to rotate. Predict which of the pulleys, if either, will complete one revolution first. And I'm going to post some videos additional to this, um, this lesson um, in the description. Watch those videos because they will help you to understand um, why, understand more, or maybe see visually why um, the pulley B will always lose to pulley A. So the um, solid discs will have uh, less inertia than the disc with the mass O spread far away from the rotation. So there is a formula for the disc and a hoop. So inertia of the hoop, inertia of the hoop is equal to m r squared, and inertia of the disc is equal to one half m r squared. They both have the same radius, but disc B has more inertia. So it will take longer time to speed it up compared to disk A. Inertia is opposing of what you're doing to, to like rotating, rotation motion. So you're in your response to um, question A, part A, you would write that um, a hoop has greater um, in rotational inertia than the disk. Therefore, it will not accelerate at the same rate as the disk A. Disc A will have higher acceleration than uh, disc B, and therefore it will complete um, faster one revolution than disc B. And as a response for uh, this question, they ask you <clears throat> predict which of the pulleys, if either, will complete one revolution first. Pulley A will complete the revolution first. Then the next question is. Um, derive an equation for the time ta it takes pulley a to complete one revolution let i a to be pulley's rotational inertia so i'm giving you this formula they usually don't give you this formula or if they do then they will ask you to use it but you don't have to memorize it um, so derive an equation for the time ta it takes pulley a to complete one revolution let IA be the pulley's rotational inertia. Express your answer in terms of FS, I, so it's the force on the spring, um, IA, inertia of A, mass of the pulley, the same for both of them, and R of the pulley, the same radius for both of them, and physical constants as appropriate. As your answer in part B1, is your answer in part B1 consistent with the answer in part A? So let's look at this. 
So torque is equal to mass times force is equal to mass times acceleration, second Newton's law, and torque is equal to inertia times acceleration. So this will be for A and acceleration for A, and this is the torque for A, and that is equal to the force acting on the disc, the one that causes it rotating, so that's Fs, and um, the how far, so there is the force acting in this direction, let me do it in dark color, there is a force acting in this direction, and it is the distance r from the center. So it's the f times r, and they have the pulley. So it's fs times rp. And from here, I can see that alpha a is equal to sp rp over ia. And you know also that acceleration is equal to um, change of the angular velocity over the time. So that is angular velocity final. Um, so angular velocity final minus angular velocity initial divided by the time. Your initial angular velocity is equal to zero and your um, average angular velocity is equal to the distance which is 2 pi divided by the time so your final angular velocity is equal to I'm gonna write it below your average uh, actually equals to initial plus the final divided by 2 so your final angular velocity is equal to twice the um, the average angular velocity um, and equals to 4 pi over t. Now I'm going to plug in my initial velocity into my equation and my final angular velocity into my equation and I have that my alpha or angular acceleration is equal to the force the radius of the pulley, inertia of the pulley, and equals to um, 4 pi over t squared. So I get t is equal to the square root of 4 pi i inertia divided by fs r of the pulley and that would be the answer for this part for the second part they say is your answer in part b1 um, consistent with your answer in part a and in part a we said that um, inertia of b is larger than inertia of a so it will take longer time for B to make one revolution and A is going to be having smaller time to complete one revolution. So it's going to complete one revolution faster. And here we see that your time depends on inertia. So larger inertia in B would give you um, longer time to complete one revolution. And smaller inertia in A will give you less time to complete one revolution. So the answer for this part is would be yes, it is consistent with my answer in part A. Now for C part, they say that um, a block of mass M is attached to pulley A as shown in figure 2. So that means in this problem. Um, the block is released from rest. Describe how the net torque exerted on the pulley and the magnitude of the angular momentum of the pulley change of the pulley are changing, if at all, in short time after the block is released. So there is a force 
acting on the pulley. So this one is MG and this one is the torque. There will be acceleration because the net force is that way uh, down and that means this is your torque which is the tension and here is R. So I can write for my equations I'm gonna say uh, the tension minus mg is equal to ma and in this case it is negative so the, the tension is equal to mg minus ma so I can say that acceleration is actually equal to mg minus t divided by m so my acceleration does not change through the whole uh, process so my acceleration in the problem and i'm drawing on the top of the uh, page right so your acceleration down does not change it stays the same and um and you know that there is a linear and angular acceleration relationship so your um, linear acceleration tangential acceleration is equal to the radius times the angular acceleration so the angular acceleration is equal to a over r and torque is equal to inertia of the disk times angular acceleration or inertia of the disk times a over r so in this problem i can see that i have inertia of the disk does not change it's the shape of the disk a does not change stays the same and r of the disk does not change stays the same so even though the disk is rotating its angular acceleration its angular acceleration and its linear acceleration is going to stay constant because none of the variables in my formula are changing so when they ask you um, the net torque increase and decreasing or not changing my answer is going to be not changing your angular momentum increase and decreasing or not changing so for angular momentum it's a little bit different because you have acceleration because you have acceleration then your um, velocity always going to depend on initial velocity plus acceleration times the time so your angular velocity is increasing so your final velocity getting bigger and bigger because there is angular acceleration and momentum and momentum is equal to a change of the momentum is equal to um, inertia change of the angular velocity and angular velocity is increasing because there is acceleration so does the um, angular momentum so for angular momentum you will say it is increasing with time and for d part a long cord of neglectable mass is wrapped around a third pulley so i have a cord wrapped around the third pulley and attached to a spring scale as shown in figure three so here would be your figure three the spring scale is pulled downward so that it exerts a constant force of magnitude fs on the cord as the spring scale moves down a significant distance the vertical portion of the cord moves closer to and closer to the center of the pulley predict how the net torque exerted on the pulley and the rotational kinetic energy of the pulley will be changing if at all as the spring scale moves downward and the vertical portion moves closer to the center of the pulley so they have choices the net torque will increase decrease or not change and rotational kinetic energy will increase decrease or not change so for the first part i have this is the radius at which the force is acting with the distance and for the second one i have this is the radius oh, let's do little r because the radius is smaller so we're going to do little r and the force is still the same acting this way so the force of the spring the same force in both cases um torque 
is equal to let me cover some things here so i can so torque is equal to here like this the torque is equal to force times the distance in the first place on the right side and um let's do initial and then torque the final is equal to same force times the distance and also the torque is equal to is equal to inertia of the disc times the um, angular acceleration and the final i'm going to rewrite it is the same force different r inertia and acceleration so i'm going to call this initial and these ones are final and one good thing to notice because the disc does not change the disc does not change it's just the force that is acting on the disc is a different point so this is not the disc it uh, looks like a hoop right um, so inertia initial and the final is going to be the same but the acceleration is going to be different so your acceleration initial here is equal to force r and inertia and your acceleration final is equal to the force the distance and inertia but your inertia here your uh, your radius here or the distance at which force is acting here is larger than over here so that means initial acceleration is bigger than the final if initial acceleration is bigger than the final then um, the final so this is initial velocity and the final velocity and your okay the final velocity is going to be initial plus the acceleration times the time but acceleration in the um is not uniform or not consistent it's increasing because um, we see that acceleration initial was bigger than acceleration afterwards so um, based on this i can say that your torque is decreasing so the torque is decreasing and um, kinetic energy is increasing because kinetic energy is equal to one half i omega squared and your acceleration um, causing the final velocity increase even faster than it would be if it was just um, at the same point not changing closer and closer to the center so your kinetic energy with time will increase because there is acceleration so my answer is here for torque torque is decreasing and your kinetic energy is increasing